Hey guys, Dark Humility here with your patch 2.7 D2R update. Hopefully you guys are ready to play season 4 D2R literally today as I record this video May 4th. I myself am actually taking a break for the first time this season as you guys may know. I play lots of hardcore D2R getting characters to 99 and uh, jamming with the community. But with all the other stuff going on, I'll be taking a break, but that's alright. You can normally, of course, watch me at twitch.tv forward slash dark humility for six to seven days a week of Diablo 2 action right now. Uh, we we're playing some different Diablo, but that is alright. We have here, though, the patch 2.7 tier list. So this is the max roll update. Just going to give you guys an idea of how the patch impacts various builds and things of that nature. One thing to note, of course, is that we have all these tier lists you can access here from the bottom on my particular document. I'll post the document in here, but you can also access them all on Maxwell as well, and they should be updated in time for the launch of the season here very soon. At any rate, we have both an experience and a loot tier list. Um, for the terror zones because there's a difference in the terror zone being good for loot or experience uh, typically bosses and super uniques and presence of that is better for loot experience you know typically just a uh, high density um, would be bosses as well um, like bale waves things like that uh, are typically really good it's really high amounts of elite packs in a very small enclosed space all those things typically matter if you've seen our previous videos we do talk about that However, there are actually zero changes on the Terror Zone list, and since there are no new rune words in season, uh, in season four, we also have all of the same rankings for the various rune words, including the new ones from Patch 2.6, which you guys can access here in this document or on Maxwell, which of course I will post below. However, what I thought I would do in this video is I'd actually make it a pretty short one where I kind of like very briefly go over changes. You guys haven't uh, don't know the justification for why things are in their current spot from previous seasons. I do recommend watching maybe my previous video, the 2.6 one, uh, maybe even the 2.5 one, 2.4 one, um, whatever. Uh, a lot of things haven't changed. There aren't that many changes in this new season. But some of the changes, especially the change to next hit delay, particularly have a real impact so let's talk about um how they will actually impact it in the most extreme way possible all right so we have a fire druid fire druid has seen a big boon from this so the way next hit delay used to work is that if you have different skills casting particle or damage particles and they're overlaid on top of each other it actually interfere with each other's damage which is you know that, that's a pretty layman's way of putting it so like it, let's say you were a mosaic sin and you charged up all your martial abilities well those different abilities there's damage effects often that damage wouldn't actually go through because uh, the damage was interfering with itself and in some cases you actually want to use slower claws as your main hand uh, just to make it to where the different damage particles would kind of not um, overlap quite as much and they would deal more damage. Uh, but now that's not the case. You can just stack as many charges as you want on the Marshall Sin. You can throw down as many fissures as you want and only within the same cast as their next hit delay. So multiple fissures can actually run damage now. Uh, it's actually kind of nuts. Uh, greatly, massively increasing the damage potential of the Fire Druid. And then, of course, is definitely the case as well uh, when it comes to the Claws of Thunder Assassin and the Phoenix Strike Assassin, which was already a monster. Uh, now, though, if you just want to go pure Claws of Thunder and mostly focus on the Claws of Thunder and Blades of Ice damage, maybe not even bother uh, stacking up every type of uh, martial arts ability, you can still absolutely wreck. So it almost doesn't matter what you do. And you can use Fast Claws, uh, Claws of Thunder Assassin, and the Phoenix Strike Assassin guides for Maxwell, though, are both properly now in the S tier. 
Of course, the Fire Druid, for the first time ever, we really solidly have an S tier Druid build. And that is just because of the change to next hit delay that is in the patch. Uh, just nuts how much damage you can do now in an area. Uh, the AoE is nuts. And, you know, accordingly, it's also been moved up to S tier uh, for density destroying. And that is definitely what it does the best. It will just absolutely, completely melt players 8 now. Uh, if it wasn't already doing so already, which it was with a full build to some extent. But now it's just crushing it um, in no time flat, which is really the hallmark of an S tier build. Uh, let's also talk about this, some things or some builds that really haven't changed since this last installment as well. So Wind Druid is affected by next hit delay. Uh, tornadoes might actually do upwards of 80% more damage sometimes uh, when going through a single target. The problem is that the tornado itself is still a little clunky and it doesn't always do damage. You always have to reposition to do damage onto the monsters. And of course, Druid teleport speed's a little slow, and it has massively less AoE than Fire Druid. Uh, but its benefit is it does physical damage, which means it's a little bit more versatile maybe. But remember, Fire does both physical and fire damage with all of its fire abilities. The Fissure Druid, Guide on Maxwell, the Fire Druid, whatever you want to call it, does that. So, the Wind Druid might see a little bit of a benefit here, but it kind of moved from maybe like bottom B tier to like top of B tier. Uh, it's arguably still not quite like those A tier builds, and it's not nearly as consistent. Um, we can also talk about, oh, interesting. We can actually also talk about how, um, whatchamacallit, the, ah yes, Wake of Fire Assassin. So now if you put down all of the traps, the fire traps will actually do damage. As long as it's a different trap, uh, they will no longer cancel each other out, which is pretty nuts. Arguably, it was kind of on the bottom of A tier before, and now it's like towards the top. There's still a bit of a delay, and fire is less um, versatile than the Lightning Sentry Assassin, for instance. But that's a big deal, though. And uh, the Wave of Fire Assassin is now looking to be a stronger build than ever. So in patch 2.7, definitely make sure to try out uh, Wake of Fire. That is going to be a pretty monstrous build. Uh, of course, for single targets, Wake of Inferno, things of that nature. So that is a very cool thing to also notice here, to also note here. Uh, let's see here. Do we have any other major points for the new patch in terms of the overall late game tier list? Let's see. Ah, yes, of course, you can't forget about... The Blade Fury Sentinel Assassin. So Blade Fury is still play pretty clunky. It's still, you know, it can still kill Ubers, but it's still whatever. Uh, but Blade Sentinel, though, despite it, you need you needing to get a bunch of Sentinels out to really do the damage and high player count is actually shredding with really high damage, and it, its damage is a lot clunkier than other types of damage, maybe in higher tiers. But it was in D tier before is actually moved up to C. You could even arguably say maybe it's even B tier, but some of these builds are a bit more consistent in their application of damage, I think. And uh, definitely, definitely sick build though. Uh, try out Blade Sentinel. Um, they used to have a one second uh, next hit delay. That would apply if you casted multiple sentries um, or sentinels. Um, now the Sentinels, as long as it's a different Sentinel, they will overlap and do damage. They will shred Bail Waves as well. So it's a really sick build. Uh, definitely, definitely uh, check that out. Absolutely. Those are really the major changes to the overall late game tier list from patch 2.7 and the most impactful things. Uh, besides Terror Zone and Runeward tier list, there are no changes to the starter builds. Uber tier list, uh, because of the change to next hit, next hit delay, Fire Druid's definitely going to be a bit stronger against Ubers. It was already capable of doing so. You could even argue it's like even as high as B tier here, but um, it definitely moved up a little bit. So once again, Fire Druid moving up in the world. Uh, Wake of Fire Assassin, instead of just being A overall, is also A at density destroying. It definitely is a very strong uh, player's eight monster crusher so definitely check that out as well and of course the fire druid is up to s and of course we have the elite hunting 
blah 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 very good stuff uh not a lot of changes to this you know remember elite hunting is mostly mf stacking and teleport speed and the ability to just crush players one and move from elite pack to elite pack and to get those uh, optimal loot tables not a lot of changes really here from this patch uh next hit delay is mostly going to affect the ability to do uh aoe damage you know especially to monsters that have a ton of health and so that's where you really see the big impacts are the density destroying tier list and the late game tier list for patch 2.7 uh, of course, you'll also see here some minor changes as well. Uh, some other builds are added into Chaos Prep tier list, which also includes just the ability to be able to do uh, seal popping as well, which is uh, after seven seconds popping the last seal, after refreshing monsters in the beginning of Chaos, and popping them for loot, and then checking the loot afterwards. Of course, you can check out the Chaos sanctuary farming guide on maxwell if you want to learn more but chaos prep is also the idea of spawning diablo uh, for a player reaching 99 it can be good during bad tz's if you're a 98 character as well still and so uh, of course you'll see a couple of new changes just some builds that were added in that weren't there before and um, a couple of minor adjustments as well so you'll definitely see that. Definitely see some pretty cool ones. Um, yeah, there's a couple of new ones there. Very good overall though, and you can definitely check all of that out. Anyway, that's pretty much it. Honestly, not a lot of massive changes going on here at all. Um, pretty basic stuff, pretty basic stuff that we can see here. And hopefully you guys now are more informed as to how patch 2.7 is going to be impacting the game in meaningful ways. And you're inspired to try out some of these builds that have seen a really big shift in power. Of course, Phoenix Strike and Lightning Strike Assassin is looking even stronger now uh, with that next hit delay change. So yeah, definitely check those out. Any kind of martial sin, just overlaying those effects is going to be even more devastating um, in, of course, whatever limited area of effect it is, but it also even makes things like Claws of Thunder more appealing as well, uh, or so not Claws of Thunder, Dragon Claw, and just fast elite targeting. Definitely check out all those builds, and uh, hope to see you guys, of course, very soon here, and let's get it. Let's smash it. Diablo 2 for life. You guys a beast. See you guys next time.